So the enrollment of September intake is almost over, but January is now open for aspiring international students who want to study here. But in this video, let's talk about how can you spot a school if it's a bad or good school. In this video, let's dive into that. My name is Coach MC and you're watching SD Planner and we do help aspiring international students to navigate their life here and also plan ahead if they wanted to study here in Canada. If you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe and also like this video. So there's so many updates lately with international students and I want you guys to be updated and be aware of like what are the schools that you have to watch out for. So I'll give you five key points in this video. Let's start with key point number one. One. So first key point is when you're looking for schools here in Canada, always check how established they are because here, especially in British Columbia, the new colleges won't be able to accept international students. They're actually banned to accept international students for two years. So if you're looking for schools and in your, if you're eyeing British Columbia, look for publicly funded or if you're uh, thinking to go to a private school with post-grad work permit, always check when they were established, right? Again, don't go to new colleges. Right now, they're banned to accept international students for two years. For the big players here in British Columbia, you can check out PCIT, Langara, Douglas College, Commerson College, North Island College, and those are with a post-grad certificate or diploma programs, but if you're checking out a master's degree, you can check out Simon Fraser University, UBC, University of Canada West. You can also check out uh, University of Victoria, Vancouver Allen University, Royal Road. There's so many universities in Canada that you can actually explore, especially in British Columbia. So next one that I want you guys to watch out for is the PPP, the Public Private a partnership and this was clearly mentioned during the interview with the minister and also the announcement that those institutions who are only using the public school to be eligible for the post-grad work permit won't be able to do that anymore this starting September 1st 2024 so if you're looking at you know like enrolling in that school or you have already paid your deposit and you have not applied for your study permit application think again and consider applying for a refund and consider other school instead of a private school without the post-grad work permit especially when the minister mentioned in one of his interviews that he will close down some institutions here in Canada who are the bad actors so again go to uh, an established school in Canada and avoid those schools who are actually without the post-grad work permit because I have a feeling that those schools will be affected with this changes and announcements. So next one is something that we guys don't talk about is when you pick a school with 95% international students i'm dead serious guys there's like a school like that here in canada and the main reason why i don't want you guys to move to or go to school like that is that you won't feel like you move out of your country you won't learn so much if you listen to just your fellow uh, nationality right you will have a different kind of learning experience if you listen to another perspective from a different culture from a different country and that's what happened to me when i was in nova scotia we were 25 in the class five of us were from different countries jamaica we have uh, from philippines we have from germany we also have from mexico and the rest are canadians and I had so much learning from that class and I had a different experience. I built connection, I built relationship with them. And it was a fun experience for me. And then that's something, and that is something that I want you guys to experience when you study abroad, right? So again, don't go to school with 95% international student with just one nationality. All right. So how would you know? Start talking to people, start reviewing the school, and then you would know. The next one that I won't recommend you guys to go to is if the school would have a strict withdrawal policy. 
and I have experienced that with my students. You know, I don't want to deal with those kind of schools. Something changed in you know IRCC policy, and then you won't be able to get your money back. <laughs> like seriously, so avoid those schools. Check the withdrawal policy, the uh, fine print, you know, the refund policy. If something happens, how can I get my money back? How long it will take you to get my money back, and how much I can get, you know? And as much as possible, if you can find a school with as low as one thousand Canadian dollars tuition fee deposit, that would be great. And again, applying for a, a refund. It's just a complete headache. Right now, some students apply for a refund because their their spouse cannot go to Canada and they had to change to master's degree. And applying for a refund is like you're begging for your money back, something like that. You know, when you were like paying your deposit, you didn't have any issues. But when you're getting your money back, you will get like, you know, crickets. You won't hear anything from them, or you will just get an automatic. Reply or something. So, I can give you the schools that I will recommend dealing with, and I can give you a list of schools that are the worst when it comes to withdrawal. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget again to visit our website if you need help when when it comes to finding your school, finding your mentor, and helping you with your study plan, managing your finances, everything in between. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and also visit our website. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.